versus Jody Davis. It's Davis and Davis again. Your match is available at the tournament point.
You are once again looking at Championship Court here at the Mesa Tennis Center as we get ready to watch a great men's pro singles match here featuring Tyson McGuffin and Ben Johns. Right now the warm-up looks uh, pretty casual, pretty relaxed, but I can promise you in just a couple of minutes it's going to be anything but casual and relaxed out here. These are two of the top players in pickleball. These guys know each other very well. So get ready to hit a few serves. Let's talk a little bit about these two players. Ben Johns out of Maryland. He's just spent part of his time in Florida. Is now a student at the University of Maryland. Tyson McGuffin out of Washington State. He's a lot of spends a lot of time traveling right now, coaching pickleball around North America. These players know each other well. In terms of uh, tactics and technique that we're going to see here, we're going to look at both these players looking to use their forehands as much as possible. They're both very quick. Ben, as we learned from Dave Weinbach uh, yesterday when we were talking about the doubles, deceptively quick. Sometimes uh, the ease with which he moves around the court kind of suggests that he might not be as fast as he actually is. And Tyson McGuffin, I don't know how many pairs of shoes that guy goes through in a year. But he's sliding all over the place, and I expect that we're going to see a lot of that here in this heavyweight matchup here. Coming at you from the Grand Slam qualifier, the Pro Pickleball Association event here in Mesa, Arizona. If you're watching right now, you are going to want to hit that share button so your friends can see it as well. So they can see the great action here from the Mesa Tennis Center. I'm your host, Mark Renison. And bring you live coverage all tournament long. This is day four of four here from Mesa, along with the team at Pro Pickleball Media, as well as Steve Taylor, bringing us some great live action. And the players are underway, or they're about to get underway, they're ready. And with that, side out, Ben Johns. Misses that first serve. <laughs> and here we go. <laughs> that ball catches the line. These guys are good friends. That's how close these balls are going to be to the line. Tyson says, I don't know, that's pretty tight. Did you see it? Ben says, I'm not sure, buddy. No problem, one nothing, Johns. Let's see if I can get you some results from other matches around the grounds right now. I'll post the draws for you all. It's a nice down the line forehand pass from McGuffin. These players are both on the winner's side here. The winner of this match is going to go forward into the gold medal match. They're going to be guaranteed a medal and some money. The loser of this match is going to go into the bronze medal final where they will have a chance to win their way back here. Frank Anthony Davis Move forward on the loser side against Kyle Yates by forfeit. Not sure what happened there. And I don't have a result now for his match uh, against Tyler Loom. I'll post the draw. Ben John so quick around the court. He's a tall player. He's got a great reach, able to play those balls while they're still high enough to attack. Two two is the score. Two two. Got a sense right now the players sort of feeling each other out, out a little bit. See if there's any vulnerabilities that they can start to notice. 
right off the bat. That ball sails just a little bit wide. McGuffin had it lined up. Didn't quite have the direction measured correctly. 2-2, two -two, Ben John serving. It's a great inside out forehand. That one does find the inside of the court. Three two, Ben Johns continuing to go to work here against Tyson McGuffin with a good slice. We'll talk about that in a moment. McGuffin reads that down the line back him. So earlier in the day I talked about the important the importance of returning serve to make your opponent stretch, hitting to the extremities of the court, because if they're stretching it's more difficult for them to hit a passing shot which is important when you're the only one who's up at the net by yourself. But you will uh, fairly often see these players hit that return of serve right down the middle of the court. Because they are so quick and so good at creating angles, when you hit near that sideline, you're opening up the possibility that they beat you on the cross court, or at least hit a good uh, third shot dink. It might create an opportunity. So while you will see, as an example of a down the sideline return that gets hit for a winner from McGuffin, but you will see a number of returns go straight down the middle of the court in order to reduce the angles. There's a an nice example of it there. Somehow Tyson finds an angle, that inside out forehand. Got to feel like McGuffin's seen that down the line pass before. Ben Johns likes to disguise which way he's going. McGuffin read it well, though. We say hi to our friend Steve Norman, checking in once again from New Zealand. Six three, McGuffin out to an early lead here in game number one. To the right, there's a middle return again. Ball lands just a little bit long. Good news, looks like DJ Sneaky Pickles back in the house. Wearing a beautiful shirt. Ben Johns driving the ball hard right at the McGuffin forehand hip. That is a good place to go when you're playing with speed from close range. Tough to defend off that right side. Ooh, offensive lob, not expecting that. We see the tweener from Johns. Got to think that that was a bit of a surprise there. I bet you Johns was either thinking that was going to be a forehand down the line, just like there was the previous shot, or a cross-court dink. Don't think he was expecting an offensive lob. Interesting to see how McGuffin works that into his repertoire. Going to be tough for McGuffin to get out of trouble here. Ben Johns so good at continuing to step on the gas when he has an advantage. Ball is just long, unforced error from Johns. All right, there's going to be a quick break here. We're going to be back in a moment. This hydration break brought to you by Jigsaw Health. It's fun to feel good. It's no secret I lose so many electrolytes when I play. Eventually, I either start cramping or I run out of gas. Electrolyte Supreme gives me enough energy and hydration. They prevent cramps, and what's really important to me, they help me to recover quicker. I know I can push myself a little bit more and not have to worry about cramps. I feel better, I feel good, and it's fun to feel good. We're feeling great, we're energized, and we're ready to have a great day, right, Lucy? And it's fun to feel good.
Back to the action, 7-4. Tyson McGuffin out to an early lead. Interesting, we see McGuffin uh, drive that backhand. We don't often see that. Usually he'll be quick enough to run around and use his forehand, or if it is on his backhand side, he'll play more of a drop. Wondering whether he's trying to show John's a different look here in this match. Another good read by McGuffin. Seven four, Tyson McGuffin serving. We talked earlier about John's being so good at being deceptive about where he's going to play that backhand. He can go down the line against you or by using his shoulder to change the paddle angle, go cross court quickly. McGuffin knew his days were numbered when that ball sat up off the top of the net. Well, that's good that we're over 300. I feel like we've got such great viewers here on the live stream. I feel like we have a good chance of getting over 400, but we're going to need your help. Hit that share button so other people can see what this great pickleball action looks like. Please hit that share button. Once again, you'll have a spot forever in my heart. All right, quick break here, hydration break. We're going to be back with more here from Championship Court in Mesa, Arizona. We're back live on Championship Court here where we're watching Ben Johns and Tyson McGuffin battle it out here. The winner of this match would go on to the gold medal final. The loser would go down to the bronze medal final with a chance to win their way back for gold. This is one of the heavyweight battles that we were looking for. That ball was called in Ben Johns with a forehand passing shot past the McGuffin backhand. We say hi to a few of our other friends who are watching. Lee Waters. Joe Williamson's back joining us, and as well as our good friend Mike Barnes from Selkirk Sport. Lee Featherby asks, hey Mark, we'd be coming over to the UK in July for the English Open Bainbridge Cup. It would be great to pick your brains about a few things. Well, you know, just send us an invitation, Lee. We'll see what we can do. The schedule gets pretty full between the coaching and the commenting. You know what? Just send me an email, mark at thirdshotsports.com. We'll talk about it. We say hi to our friend Louis Charles Amio, great young player from Canada. There's that McGuffin running around the backhand, and he finds the opening there. You can see why it's so important that these players be so fit. McGuffin's been working hard in the gym over the last year, knowing that it's very often comes down to the physical fitness of the players. These players are so technically skilled out there that being able to go all day long and still play at your best at the end of the day after you've had a bunch of grueling matches. It's amazing, and there we go, a good read from McGuffin. Seems to have a sense of where Johns is gonna go when the, he, he does have those 50-50 opportunities. 9-8, McGuffin two points from taking game number one here. He mixes in a lob serve. Let's see if that rhythm change affects Johns. Ben's able to play a good deep slicing return. McGuffin finds the net. You'll notice, I don't think there's been a single time yet where the returner has not come forward. We talked about that earlier. If you want to apply pressure, you, you do it from the front of the court, not the back. Ben hits a ball that likely would have gone out, but with a sense that he had an open court to hit to, he doesn't want to take that gamble. Just redirects down the line. 9-9. Nine, nine. Again, a good return of serve by McGuffin. This is why you see so many side outs and singles because the server has to 
cover all this territory by themselves with those strong returns, either to open court or down the center. T relatively tough to score points on the surf. Crowd likes that one. Ben Johns definitely does, and Tyson McGuffin knows that he got pretty lucky on that. That ball was well behind him. He guessed wrong. He was going to his left, but the ball went to his right. As bad as Tyson thinks that was, that just set up a game point for him. 10-9. And with that down the line pass into the open court, Tyson McGuffin takes game number one, 11-9. What a great start. This is the kind of action we were hoping to see here in this men's winner's bracket final match. Going for gold if they can win it. We're going to be back with more here from Mesa, Arizona in just a moment. Stay close. Does anyone know how to use this thing? Oh, here's IT. Just tap. Uh, hi, guys. We are back live on Championship Court here. Mark Renison bringing you the coverage. Ben Johns goes down the line. That ball manages to stay in the court. If you're just joining us, it's a men's pro singles match between two of the top players, Ben Johns, Tyson McGuffin here, battling it out. McGuffin won game number one, 11-9. Scores 1-0 here in game number two. The winner of this match will go on to the gold medal final. The loser will go to the bronze medal match. Where they will have a chance to win their way back to, for gold. Zero one one is the score. Tyson McGuffin, that's that one-two punch. It's so important to play that drive down the line, not necessarily to win the point, but to get something you can attack. And you'll see these players, after they hit that drive, if they feel like they hit it well enough, they'll immediately move forward to look to pounce on something sitting up just a little too high. 1-1. One, one. McGuffin realizes he's not in a good place to attack there. More more commonly, what you'll see him is roll that ball cross court, try to battle at the point of the soft game at the net. One of the things that has to happen is after you win a game, sometimes if those emotions are going a little too high, a little too much confidence, then you start to be a little bit impatient, feel like you can hit winners from just about anywhere against a player of John's caliber. Gotta be careful. Pick your spots. With that ball into the net, that's going to be a side out. Ben John serves. If you haven't done so yet, please, please hit that share button. Helps other people see this great action. It's a good serve from Johns. Scores 2-1 here. Ben would love to add to his lead here. He gets McGuffin going the wrong way. A little bit late on that split step by McGuffin. Sort of making contact as Ben was making contact and uh, didn't have quite enough time to change his direction. That ball's wide. We talked earlier about the usefulness of a return of serve that goes straight down the middle of the court, limiting the angles that the server can create with their third shot. And we said, nice sample of that there. Scores 2-3 here. Tyson McGuffin with a deep serve. Even deeper return from Ben Johns. McGuffin's going to have to work hard to get out of that jam. He can't. It's going to be set out.
crowd a little bit quiet right now, really. Sort of feeling the tension here in this game. Got a feeling that here, if you're going to see a great winner. The ball is called just wide. 2-3. Ben John so good once he's got you in a bit of trouble there deep in the court on the backhand side. He's not going to let up. Really the only uh, rescue shot there, if you can call it that, would be a good drop that really forces an upward hit from John's, but that's so tough to do with his long reach. Again, wow. That ball goes just long. And once again, I'm going to give the edge to McGuffin when we're in those little dinking battles near the net. He seems to have a good read on where Johns is going to go. and I'm going to argue that has more to do with patterns rather than technique because Ben is so good at disguising his direction. And these two have played so many times together that you know they have a read on what each other like to do in different situations. And... McGuffin seems to be anticipating pretty well, which he'll need to do. Couldn't anticipate that. We talked at the start about using that inside out forehand. All right, one quick break. We're going to take a break as well. This hydration break brought to you by Jigsaw Health. More in a moment from the PPA Grand Slam qualifier here in Mesa, Arizona. In pickleball, the last thing I want to think about when I'm playing is cramping or if you're able to perform 100%. Last US Open, I was playing singles and I was feeling like my right calf was getting like really stiff. And I was just like, okay, how can I help my body to perform better? When I start taking Jigsaw products, I'm going to have energy, I'm going to have good endurance, and I don't have to worry about me being tired or I'm going to cramp, so I can just play 100%. You only have one body, so you need to take care of it. We're back here live on championship court. 4-2 is the score here. Ben John serving to Tyson McGuffin. He had Tyson going the wrong way once again, but misfires a little bit. That ball goes out. 2-4. It's a great deep volley from Johns. And once again, McGuffin reads where Johns is going. And I want to welcome to the broadcast booth special guest. You heard from him a moment, well, a few moments ago at the start of this match, Mr. Dave Weinbach. Dave, welcome back to the booth. Great to be uh, back with you, Mark. And, uh as we rejoin game two here. Oh my. Oh. It's been quite the match out here, hasn't it, Dave? I caught the uh, second half of game one, Mark, and it looked like Tyson was really anticipating well where Ben's next shot was coming. I'm assuming you talked about that. We did talk. It's, it's almost like you were listening to the stream, <laughs> Dave. Yeah, I mean, one of the things here, we've talked before about how it's so hard to read a player like Ben Johns, especially when you get into those dinking battles at the net. It disguises the shot so well that if you're waiting till after he hits it to react, you're almost always going to end up on the wrong side of things. And it seems that more often than not, Tyson's making that move just before Ben hits it. And my argument is that it's not so much that it's like this technical anticipation where Tyson's reading the paddle or reading the body. It has more to do with the habits that Ben has yes. shown. These guys have played each other so many times. Tyson doing a great job right now of anticipating where it's going because he's seen Ben play so many times. And that ball does indeed skid on that sideline. McGuffin looking very good to me, Mark. He looks very, very healthy. He's moving the best I've seen him. We played a lot of rec games earlier in the week with McGuffin and Newman and I and Deacon. And uh, Tyson was not uh, feeling his best. There's another example there. Reading, I mean, Tyson's in what I think 
is inarguably a defensive position when Ben gets that ball sort of thigh high on the forehand side and Tyson moves just down the line to cover that ball. Interesting, Mark, I was just talking to a bunch of other pros as we were watching the end of the first game and we were uh, kind of kiddingly said that in these winner's bracket finals when these guys meet, it's interesting because we almost know they're going to meet again two hours from now in the gold medal match. It's just who has to play an extra match to get there. Oh, what a rally. Look at the footwork. Oh, it's in. Oh, wait, McGuffin goes for it. Oh! <laughs> the point of the match. Wow. And both players get a terrific, well-earned round of applause from all these fans, Mark. I mean, terrific Did crowds here yeah. all week. I know you've been talking about that. Yeah, it has been great. And Dave, you say that there's a, a reminder, McGuffin guesses wrong on that one. A reminder, whoever wins this match will go to the gold medal final. Whoever loses will go to the bronze medal final for a chance to get back to gold. But that's not guaranteed. Right now there's a match going on between Tyler Loon and Gabriel Joseph out there. The winner of that is going to move forward in order to play the loser of this one. So Loon and uh, Joseph, they're going to have something to say. This hydration break brought to you by Jigsaw Health. We're going to be back in a moment with more. Mark Rennes and Dave Weinbach on center court here. And people have this conception that pickleball, oh, that's an old person sport, but I don't think they realize how physically demanding it is with those quick bursts and long, grueling points. The first U.S. Open, I found myself cramping in two different events. When you start cramping, it's too late. And when I first started playing, I wasn't ready for that. The biggest difference I feel on the court with Jigsaw products is I'm not cramping at all. It gives you that mental confidence that your body's going to hold up. Jigsaw products will provide a lot of value to you both on and off the court. We're back live on Championship Court, 7-4, Ben John serving to Tyson McGuffin. That's going to be trouble. Not sure about that play, Mark. Yeah. Yeah, and it cost yeah. him. And McGuffin, after all that work, the ball sale is just a little, sorry. Just a, a questionable <laughs> decision to uh, bring Ben in on that one. <laughs> it's going to be a quick time out here as Tyson McGuffin wants a little bit of break to regain his composure. Uh, Dave, what, were you playing some singles today? I did play some singles today in the Why don't you tell us how that went? Plus. And? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, came out of the gates pretty strong, played a really tough opponent right away named Dan, Dan Grenoble from Atlanta. Kind of a single specialist, played college tennis, was a... Yeah, college All-American, just a tremendous uh, athlete, left-handed, went to three games, great battle with him, I seem to be playing him often, uh, then uh, took on, let's see, my second match was against a new uh, senior pro, I cannot remember how to say his last name, but his first name is Steve, and he's from the Sacramento area, an ex-tennis professional, and uh, walked, ran around, covered the court, like a 26-year-old is what I was telling the people around the court. And he smoked me. Wait, wait, you were covering the court like a 26-year-old or he was? No, he was. Uh. I was covering the court like a 50-plus-old. 50, 50 56-year-old. <laughs> so he... All right, we are back. Oh, great return by McGuffin. Put that ball on the baseline. There we go, Ben Johns. Maybe got to wonder whether he knows that, or he's noticed, I should say, that McGuffin's been reading it well, maybe changing up some of his common patterns. Yeah, Nine four. McGuffin leaning left there. I mean, that's the thing, Dave, about these players, is being able to make these little micro adjustments as the match unfolds, reading what's going on, having a sense of what's going to work for them and what's not. Meanwhile, we've got a game point here for Ben Johns, 10-4. Well, have you, as you've indicated, these players have played each other so many times. I don't know what the number is, but I bet you they've played, you know, 30 matches. And there it is. McGuffin waves at that passing shot from Johns. The crowd is happy that this is going to go to three games as these players have a quick sit-down. We're going to take a quick break as well. 
Back in a second, Mark Renison, Dave Weinbach here. Game number three coming up next. We get a game three of this amazing pickleball. We are back live here on Championship okay. Court. Who's ready for game three? We've been watching Tyson McGuffin. Tyson Ben. Thanks for giving us a game. And Ben three. Johns. Here we go. Game number three. The winner of this goes to play out for gold. The loser of this. That will be their first loss. Mark Renison alongside Dave Weinbach and Dave, just a programming note, after this match is over, we are gonna see the women's gold medal match in the pro division, Michelle Esquivel battling her way out of the loser's bracket. She's gonna be taking on Irina Tereshenko immediately after this match. Oh, that's gonna be special, folks. Do not go anywhere after this match. That is gonna be a treat to watch. What a great volley by Ben. Getting that so deep. That put Tyson on such the defense mark that kept Ben in complete control of that point. One of the things we talked about earlier, Dave, was the ability for these players to just sort of keep their foot on the gas once they have an advantage to uh, not let the other player back in because they know if they do just give an inch, the other ones will take a mile. Yes, and uh, John's kind of shaking his head at himself after that serve that sailed about five feet long. That ball. Oh, that, thought that clipped the line. That missed serve, you see a few people shaking their heads and they say, hey, I'm not a pro, I can miss my serve too. What we're seeing here, and we talked about this specifically in singles, here's gonna be a good example of it, is if you don't hit a good return, you are in big trouble up at the net, even more so than in doubles. And so what the singles players will do is they're gonna go for a little more on that serve to try to elicit the poor return. And sometimes when you go for a lot, you occasionally miss. That's the price you gotta pay if you're hitting high quality balls that cause trouble for your opponents. Meanwhile, McGuffin in a bit of trouble here. That ball goes wow. just wide. Both players working extremely hard. I mean, fortunately, Mark, it has been a great week weather-wise. I mean, our highs have been in the 73, 74 range, and that return sails long, and Ben Johns gets another freebie. 3-0. Gabby Stokely watching from Switzerland. Thanks for sharing. We had someone uh, who noticed that during the timeout, um, Ben took the the grip on his paddle off and then re-gripped it. And they're asking, why wouldn't he just use a fresh paddle so he didn't have to re-grip it? Dave, you got any thoughts on that? When the paddles come, they don't come with an over-grip on them. And Ben, as a lot of ex-tennis players, like to put an over-grip on the paddle to their exact specification and Ben along with a lot of the crows now Mark we see regrip their paddle pretty much every single match I think oh. it would also be because I mean you could have multiple paddles in your bag with fresh grips on them right and I think we talked yesterday a little bit about why um, the pros like uh, specific balls and want to keep using that ball and they want to keep using that ball because of the feel, because the feel is so important, right? And uh, and I think there's a similarity there. You know, once you're playing and you're used to the particular feel of a particular paddle, um, even if it, you know, the other one is the exact same weight and everything, there's sort of a psychological advantage to using the same piece of equipment. You know, how's that the saying go? Dance with the one that brung ya, <laughs> yeah. right? And to continue to use that one. And so just change up the grip, but to keep that, um, that same paddle. That's typically, we can ask Ben when we have a chance afterwards. Anyway, back to the match here. McGuffin uh, sensing that Johns was gonna lean left, to cover the line, hits a forehand cross court winner. Clips off the top of the net, impossible for, and one more time we saw Tyson McGuffin going the wrong way, and so this is an interesting adjustment Johns has made, realizing that McGuffin's been reading him well. And there's another missed serve by Johns. 1-4, mm. McGuffin to serve here in game number three. Winner going forward to gold, loser going down to the loser's bracket. That's three of the last four serves that Johns has missed. 
too long and one in the net so that's something to keep an eye on here and you know Mark you talk a lot about a player's mentality and confidence level I really think this is affecting Ben that this these miss serves I think is affecting him in terms of his confidence level so let's keep an eye on this and see if he goes a little more conservative with this serve and doesn't go all in yeah there just kind of rotate yep yeah. yeah. Rolled it in there. A paddle scraper there for McGuffin. There's going to be a timeout called. We're going to be back in a moment with more here from game number three at the PPA Grand Slam qualifier in Mesa, Arizona. All right, and we're back live here. Mark Renison alongside Dave Weinbach. Mark, we were just talking off the air there for a sec. Um, I think. Tyson worked so hard to capture that game one. I think he's a little winded there, which we just saw from a quick timeout from him. Uh, let's keep an eye on, on that because these guys, this is only the winner's bracket final. And he might have to play two more matches. That's going to sail wide. You know, fitness is a real big part of this singles game. So much different, Mark, than doubles is the physical tear that it takes on the body and there's so much movement back and forth, especially the way these two play with the cat and mouse game. All that lateral movement takes a lot out of you, not to mention the mental aspect of the game with, I mean, people don't, people underestimate the amount of decisions that a pickleball player has to make when you're playing a match. That is something we talked about earlier, the importance of fitness so you can play. Look at that tight. Ben did not have to hit that shot, but it was such an easy backhand and he had the whole court open. He didn't want to take a chance that that would curl in, but it was going to be a foot out. Someone was asking about the fans. The fans are pretty full. The stands are pretty full here and what you can sort of just see off screen behind the referees is another seating area and that one's actually shaded. And so there's a whole bunch of people over there as well, rather than sitting uh, in the sun here in the stands. But we've had a great, uh, we've had a great turnout all tournament long here at this inaugural PPA event. For a lot of people, uh, most people at home, Dave, probably play doubles pickleball more than they play singles pickleball. And that's the same here. So sometimes what you'll get is people who sort of stick with what they know. They'll come out to the action. Uh, that they're familiar with, I actually make the opposite agreement or <laughs> argument that coming out and watching singles is a great way to enjoy the sport uh, and this aspect of the sport without necessarily playing it yourself. Absolutely. I would probably say that 90, 95% of the pickleball that's played in, this, in the world is doubles, and I might be low on that percentage. I know I can never find people to play singles uh, with me back Back home. Okay, we are back to the live action here. Talk about working hard out there. McGuffin definitely putting in more steps to chase down those balls right here in game number three than John's. You know, it's just thinking that, uh, Mark, that it looks like Ben is not having to forgive the energy level that Tyson is. And that's going to be a huge factor as this day goes on. He'll catch up to that. Oh, and a John's miss hit off the edge of his paddle. I don't even think Ben needed to hit that ball, Mark. I think from our angle, we could see that that ball was going to sail long. Yeah. McGuffin catches a bit of a break with that miss hit. You got to think. If he was down 8-1 on John's serve, it'd be so tough to come back from here. At least he's got a chance to score, but not for long. That's going to be a side out. Ben Johns continues serving at 7-1 here in game number let's three. See, let's see if McGuffin gets a little more aggressive here, Mark, and tries to end these points a little bit sooner in a little bit less of this cat and mouse game. I think he might try to do that to conserve a little energy going forward. So let, let's see if he tries to get a tad more aggressive here. Goes for the high lob serve to the backhand. Oh, that's a good example. What an that was an aggressive shot he had to go for there. A little bit of a reach, but uh, 
able to get that ball back cross court and down low enough out of the reach of Mr. Johns. Quick programming note right after this, we are going to have women's gold coming up. It's going to be Michelle Esquivel taking on Irina Tereschenko for the gold and the cash right after this match. You're going to want to watch. Ben Johns continues to go to work here. 7-2 in game number three. That ball's wide. You know, Tyson played such a clean game in that first game. That's the best I have seen him play in a long time in these two, in the, when these guys match up. Oh. McGuffin can't quite get there. He guessed right on that initial down the line pass. Uh, McGuffin breathing a lot heavier than John's at this point in this match. Of course, Ben has a couple of years on him, Mark. John's can't quite get that cross court drop to get up and over the net. Phil James Lammer asking why, if we know why Lucy and Simone didn't play in singles. You know what? Sometimes players, uh, they know they're going to go deeper. They suspect they're going to go deep in the doubles event. And uh, singles, as we talked about, so physically demanding. And sometimes they'll, you know, depending on their tournament schedule and what they've got, you know, their tournament plan, I should say, over the course of the year, sometimes they might uh, stick to the doubles early on. Singles at this level really is so tough on the body, Dave. Let's see if McGuffin goes for, uh, went for the high lob serve, and it worked out. And that's a really good example, Mark. We've talked about this. Um, Speaking of Lucy Kovalova, she just joined the stream. <laughs> All right. Hey, J Lucy, welcome. Joey Ferris as well. We're going to take a quick hydration break powered by Jigsaw Health back in a moment with the conclusion of game number three. And pickleball, the last thing I want to think about when I'm playing is cramping or if you're able to perform 100%. Last US Open, I was playing singles and I was feeling like my right calf was getting like really stiff. And I was just like, okay, how can I help my body to perform better? When I start taking Jigsaw products, I'm going to have energy, I'm going to have good endurance, and I don't have to worry about me being tired or I'm going to cramp, so I can just play 100%. You only have one body, so you need to take care of it. All right, we're back live here. Four seven, Tyson McGuffin serving. It's, it's funny. We just had a as we watch that ball dribble over the net. We just had a question about why Lucy and Simone weren't playing in the singles. Lucy joined us on the stream. <laughs> she said, "Hey everyone, enjoy the Jigsaw commercial." And uh, she already had a really long weekend. And just as she wrote, posted that, we uh, saw our good friend Simone Jardim join us here courtside here on Championship Court, taking in the action with her. Mixed doubles partner. And that backhand pass is going to sail wide and give McGuffin a side out here at a very key junction mark here in game three. I think McGuffin's got to get a point or two. And there is a Again. freebie. Again, uh, the lob serve, the rhythm change. Johns can't believe he missed it twice in a row now. 5-7. Not surprisingly, McGuffin goes for another lob serve. And that down the line pass, that catches the line. And you get a roar from McGuffin. He's loving that. So does the crowd. 6-7. Tyson sensing that this is such an important point in this match, in this game three. Great deep return by Johns. Uh-oh, uh -oh, he's out of position here. That's not wow. coming back. Yeah, good job by Johns to realize that as fast as McGuffin was, he ran around his backhand so far, he was almost in the first row with the bleachers. No chance if that ball was hit short to the other side of the court. And that's, that's the negative. When you run around your backhand, you get so far out of position. That's the risk you take. Uh-oh. Ooh. Ben Johns, Johns set up the opportunity. High forehand yep. back. He set it up perfectly. McGuffin encouraging himself to use it. Use that opportunity. Make something happen here. 6-7. That ball's just wide. McGuffin Missed feels like he went a bit too much. By a ball. Yeah. We had a really good angle on that one. I mean, that's the thing. You've got to be so precise with these when you're playing against a player like Ben Johns. 
the correct read from McGuffin, but puts the ball in the net. All right, we're going to go to a quick break. We're going to be back with more here. It's game number three. Live action here, Ben John serving. 8-6 here in game number three for the right to go and play for gold. That ball just catches inside the corner of the court. Ben's going to have to work hard here if he wants to get out of this. Oh, an interesting choice. So that's the second time. He used it effectively at the very start of the match, and he hasn't used it since then. When he gets into one of those dinking rallies, that to me is an adjustment we've seen from McGuffin. We haven't seen from him in the past against Johns, is using that, uh, that offensive lob over the backhand side. And that's the key mark, as he throws it over the left shoulder, the backhand side. No. Oh my. Tyson McGuffin jumps the corner, got exactly what he wanted, the high ball to put it away, and like a goalie, Ben Johns just sticks out his paddle, blocks it into the open court. 8-6. Johns anticipating perfectly where that ball was going to end up. You'll see Tyson takes sort of a walking timeout here. Seeking a, a little shade for about two seconds. Marcin Rospetsky so good at that walking timeout, really. Uh-oh. That's trouble. I think McGuffin's got to hit a backhand in that situation. If you run around like that, you're putting so much pressure on yourself to have to hit a winner on the next shot, and you're so far out of position. That ball just finds the inside of the court. Ben Johns feeling like he's got a chance here, 9-6. Great low return by McGuffin. Um, Tyson loves jumping over the kitchen on his left side and slapping that backhand. He generates not only a great angle on him, but he gets a lot of pace on it. He loves that shot. He's become so good at it. Just a little bit wide. Yes, I did see that much. wide That's as well. A, a little bit of green there. Missed by half a ball. 7-9 is the score. But there he goes with a high lob serve to the backhand again. That ball catches the oh, line. Gets it. Can't get much closer than that, Dave, and still keep the ball in play. Wow. You've talked about what a fine line you have to take if you're going to go for that pass, and he actually hit the line. What a forehand pass at a huge moment in the game. 8-9. Mm. He had the right direction there. Low toward that John's backhand. Would have looked for a pop-up. Said it's a bit too low. McGuffin knowing he missed an opportunity there. With a big sigh. Oh, what a great return. Yeah. Johns wins that reflex. McGuffin that anticipating uh, well that it was going to go to his backhand side, but didn't do anything with the ball. All right, and we now have our first match point. 10-8, Ben Johns serving, trying to get into the gold medal match. He had it lined up. That ball catches the net. McGuffin still has life. 8-10. It's one of Johns' favorite shots is to roll that forehand across his body. 
Rob Noonan is here to remind you, Dave, that you still owe me three beers. What a, oh. oh. And Ben Johns with ben the open court had what he wanted. Ben anticipated it very well and just plopped that volley right into the net. Nine, ten. There's that lob serve again. It's worked before. That ball's wide. Oh, John's winning. And all of a sudden, Dave, we are locked at ten. A little bit of overtime action here on. This center court wow. here for the right to go to the gold medal, 10-10. It's a win by two Johns situation. had so many options with that shot. Very disappointed in himself with that choice. McGuffin tries to get out of trouble with a drop. Oh, and ben what a cover by Able ben. to cover the down the line pass. Well done. High quality play from both sides here. Ben Johns takes over serving at 10-10. Got a win by two. Tyson hit a great backhand low with topspin and Johns anticipating it perfectly. McGuffin was looking for the Ernie attempt. Johns avoids it. And that is an open court volley. And McGuffin fired up. He wants this badly. Ten ten. Wow. Feel the tension in Again, the air mark, lobster. the drama. Love it. McGuffin calmly plays a drop from trouble. Oh! No. <laughs> uh, McGuffin thought there was no way Ben Johns from that position, that amount of reach, could hit the outside of the ball enough to get that kind of an angle. See how he cups his hand and actually comes around the side of the ball to generate these angles. 10-10. Oh, nice return. That's a great return by McGuffin. That Low, ball. kind of short, not that deep. Right, low yeah, and we, a little we've bit short. We talked about that return, the, the return to the middle of the court that stays down. It's a very difficult ball to attack. 10-10. Wow. Wow. <laughs> And right here, we have another match point. This time, though, McGuffin serving 11-10. Let's see if he goes to the lob serve again or back to his more characteristic. There's the lob. It's been working for him in this match. Oh, he wants <laughs> that forehand <laughs> back. <laughs> All right, we're going to stay here through the timeout on this one. And Dave, I mean, this what? is pretty much as good as it gets. This is awesome, and it's uh, not no to nobody's surprise that these two players are meeting in this gold medal match. I think Tyson really, really wanted to end that with one swing of his bat with that cross court forehand. Actually, even if that ball went over Mark, Johns had anticipated that well, and he was there for the volley. So this will be a side out to Johns when he come back, serving at 10-11 here in game three of the winner's bracket final at the first professional pickleball association tournament here at the Mesa Tennis Center. We are about 15 miles east of downtown Phoenix at the base of the Superstition Mountains. Just a gorgeous environment. Here we go, Mark. 10-11, Ben John serving to McGuffin. Oh, that doesn't get much closer than that on the return of serve. To the open court. McGuffin just runs out of steam there. Read the play well from Johns a few times, but Johns was there with the reply. And Johns with a huge yell, knowing how important getting to 11 was right there. 11-11. That ball is just long. That ball is long. 11-11. I did see that long by, by a ball. 11-11, wow. Oh, what a great drop. That ball's wide. And that's gonna set up another match point here. 12-11. What do you think, the lob serve or gonna rip it? 
I think he oh, is going to get oh. it in, Mark. He's not going to rip it. He's not going to rip it. I think he's going to be conservative on this serve. Ooh, yeah. that could have been called a foot fault, how far he was near the center of the it's court. It's close. Like he definitely it's close. He definitely starts, but then he moves over. But that one... And the reason he's doing that is he wants the best angle to the John's backhand. 11, Great 12. return. Oh! oh McGuffin what a goes as far hand. as he can over. That's not quite enough. Great angle created off the backhand. Go, go, come on, kid. Uses that left hand to really curl that ball cross court. 12 12. Got a win by two. That's going to sail along to give Ben Johns his first match point here at 12 11. This is 11. his second match point, actually. 13 12. Went conservative on the serve. Wow. Oh. Wow. No. Oh, and that that's ball lands in. in. What an ending to this match. This is what pro level pickleball looks like, and this is why the fans are giving such a round of applause for both the players out here. Ben Johns fired up. He's going into the final. Tyson McGuffin, he's going to be going into the bronze medal final, which means if he can pull that one out, he'll be back here to play Ben Johns in the final. It doesn't wow. get any better than what we just saw, Mark. That was incredible. I've seen a lot of matchups with these two players, and that is as good as it gets. I think both players really brought their A game, Mark, yeah, in what that a match. Treat. And it wouldn't surprise any of us, of course, if we see this matchup again in about an hour and a half from right now. Well, Gabriel Joseph and Tyler Loon, they've got something to say about that. Tyler Loon actually came through, so McGuffin is gonna be playing Tyler Loon again. We saw that matchup earlier today. Meanwhile, we've got the women's final coming up. Michelle Esquivel is going to take on Irina Tarashenko, who hasn't lost a match today. We're going to be back in a moment with more here from Championship Court in Mesa, Arizona.